Hi everyone, I would like to thank you to Lisa for inviting us and I would also like to thank all the contributors and organizers for those two incredibly rich days which we have behind us. Uh, I don't have much time so I'll cut off all the funny parts. <laughs> <laughs> what Miroslav just showed us illustrates uh, to an extent the reason why I decided to go with him to Outfots to visit his studio. It was winter 2010, so I was a late comer to the place. Some curators were there, were coming there for all, over 20 years. Andrea was there, as a matter of fact, in 1990. And we started to work to talk about our collaboration shortly after this visit, and we decided to work around this situation and this experience of being in Otfotsk. And the project, I mean, the house where Miroslav spent his childhood, and when he produced so many of his works, became a kind of trigger for our reflection on the relationship between art and the space in which it is made. And also it, had, it provided a pretext to think about, to look at surroundings of the studio of the house uh, and their potential as a place for other artists to work. Uh, the project has a relatively open formula and it consists mostly of artist commissions. It involves very informal research in collaboration with different specialists and we were trying to reach out for writers somehow related to Otfotsk or curators who were previously interested in similar ideas or working in similar fields. But we were also looking for people who were connected to Otfotsk in the past and one of the examples is Professor Joseph Rickford, a British architecture historian based in London who um, immigrated from Poland in 1939 when the world was started and he used to have a childhood, I mean, his summer house was in Otford, so he spent a large part of his childhood in the town. Mm, all those contributions are supposed to help us to expand our knowledge of, on the place, but also on approaching the place and working with the place. And they form for us additional layers and maybe interpretational threads for the project and we, at some point we plan to publish it all online. <coughs> mm, Outfots doesn't take form of an exhibition in public space or any other exhibition. It consists of a mm, constellation of episodic projects like spontaneous interventions and we also hope that they can uh, shape a version of the town or a vision of it a bit different than what you get on the very first glimpse. I'll focus on commissions to respond to the topic of the session, the, the ways in which, in which artists extract meaning from history and the site. And um, maybe it's important to say that in, our, in case of our collaboration, the site has twofold meaning, twofold sense. It refers to both the studio and the town of Otfotsk itself. And our idea, our way, our way of working is suspended between those two venues. Of course, the studio came first and it constitutes the project. It is a space with strongly personal, personal intimate ca character, as you could see, and it marks the mm, introspective aspect of our work. Uh, from the very beginning, we were very aware of the fact of the particular character of the space, yet we didn't want to mm, create a situation when it would become a preserved space or an artificial stage set, any sort of museum. We didn't want to historicize it. So, Instead of like closing the history of the place, we wanted to open it up and therefore we started to look beyond the studio's walls. And this is where the local landscape and the notion of site specificity came into play. Mm. Otfotsk is situated circa 20, 25 kilometers from Warsaw. Uh, in the interwar period, it was a very fashionable and elegant health resort, uh, very popular among, among Warsaw intelligentsia. Uh, it was famous for the local clima climate, the pines and the dry uh, were supposed to be uh, helpful for patients with uh, tuberculosis or other respiratory diseases. Up to 75% of the city population before the war uh, was Jewish. And in August uh, 1942, as Miroslav said, all of them were deported to the concentration camp to Treblinka from the Otfos ghetto. And after the war, the city never Mm, get its former splendor, its former status back. And it fell into decline very quickly. And then the privatization and the construction boom, which came after 1989, resulted with even greater urban chaos. So the present day architecture seems to be very chaotic and accidental. 
the place remains very unique due to the pre-war status. History is very strongly present with, in literature. Uh, the architecture is also very famous in some cases. And all those aspects uh, uh, find some reflection in Miroslav's art and in his practice because he uses found materials and objects, preserves the memory of the place. Um, he kind of describes the town in his own words and in his own way. And well, when we are thinking about describing the city, there is an obvious con connection to Italo Calvino and his invisible cities. And of course, there is a whole area of quotes which we could use to describe the thinking about mm, describing the city or showing the city, showing people around. But I would rather say that it's the construction of the book which makes important relation to our project. I, I'm sure that this, that's the same for Folkestone. Because in, Mar in Calvino's book, when Marco Polo describes all the cities he saw to the emperor, he, he, he meant they don't speak the same language. So when he, every time he tells him the story, he brings up an object in order to trigger associations. And I think this is also a kind of our case, because every time we bring somebody from the outside to the city and try to explain them, the local context, we just show bits and pieces and fragments and different versions of, of, of information. So there is a lot of space for imagination and we are kind of setting up a framework for the project and the mosaic of elements which could be potentially explored or provide new readings of the place. And I guess to make another connection with Penzance maybe and Falmouth Convention, we are just following Lucy Lipat in here. Uh, in here, and when she writes in the lure of the local that uh, all the art is working with site specificity, and it's a quote, can expose the social agendas that have formed the land, bring out multiple readings of places that mean different things to different people at different times. Mm, yeah. Back to practicalities. Last year we decided to start off the project by inviting three young artists from different countries. And it was Lara Almarsegui, uh, Anna Moska, and Charlotte Mott. None of them uh, was never in Otkos before. They first came for a short site visit, and then there was a possibility of having a short resi uh, resi residency there. Um, all of the concepts grew up from a very empiric in situ experience of being in the city, of their own observations there. And it's quite interesting that all of the artists turned their attention towards the, the moment when history meets the, pa the past, the present. And um, the present moment seems to be much more accessible for them than actually the history of the place. Uh, Lara Almasegui is a Spanish artist, and in her practice she looks at ruins, places at the verge of vanishing or being transformed, and in Otfotsk she concentrated on a typical wooden villa built in Schwiedermeyer st style that was the landmark of the area in the interwar period, and I'm using past tense here because they are, they are simply vanishing, they are, they are demolished, they often occupy a ver very expensive lots of land. They are very difficult to renovate because they are all listed as monuments. And therefore, they are being burnt or destroyed in order to free the land for sale. So burnt remains of the houses like this are not in a common view in Otvotsk. And what Lara did, she found a, a house owned by the city, not by private owners, and formally slotted for demolition, slated for demolition. And she found a company which helped her describe the particular stages of demolition and documented the house and then published the announcement with the description of demolishing the house in a local newspaper. So instead of being this marginal of, of demolition being this marginal fact, like shivering being somewhere on the border of legality even, it became this acknowledged social act available to everyone and it triggered some discussion. Then Anna Moska, she's a Polish artist for all of you who will be in London soon. She opens her show at Tate's mo mo Modern Project Space this week. She's, she mostly works with film and she decided to do a sculpture when she arrived to Oxford's end. <coughs> the welcome sign is a seven meter high sculpture made out of the pine tree extracted from local forest, but it was supposed to be 
cut out anyway, so we didn't do any. It was a very ecological project. <laughs> and it's situated on the roundabout at the entrance of the city. And I think what Anna wanted to do is to kind of play with this, uh, with this problem of visual chaos around the city and all those uh, advertising sign, uh, signs when you enter the city and the call for often bad quality design. So she used the pine tree, which is the most characteristic tree in the local landscape, just to incorporate the, the her welcome sign into the city, uh, into the local landscape. But also there is a, another meaning of this project. The pine tree used to be an element <coughs> of Otford's crest, exactly in the moment when it was this health resort. And now, of course, it isn't anymore, but also Otford's lost this very elegant character. This past is very, seems to be very distant now. So I think Anna, just sheds new light on some problems which are still hidden in the city texture. And finally, Charlotte Moss, who's a British artist, and a point of departure for her works is her ongoing cycle called, cycle called Travelogue, when, where, where she documents architecture and interiors all over the world, and she looks for buildings or objects which have universal character, so you cannot say where do they actually belong. And Otfors was quite challenging for her because it has almost too much character, actually. And fortunately, we find the area called Schulbauf, and it's a, and a city garden with Bauhaus-style villas. And she decided to work there. She documented the area, and then she started to look at this particular building called Villa Surprise. And she decided to make a photo shoot there, which would Install this reflection of the villa in front of it because what, what she encountered when she, uh, when she tried to find out about the history of the building is that absolutely no documents are available and this is also the case of Otfos we don't know any history of ownership of most of the buildings. So it was this sign of the heroic image and the impossibility to fathom the history of the place. But surprisingly, when we arrived to do the photo shoot, the villa wasn't there anymore. We literally found an empty crater in the ground, and it was demolished just within three days, although we were in touch with the owners, and everything seemed to be fine. So Charlotte needed to react very quickly, and then her intervention became, instead of being this universal project, it became more of a witness to the recent past of this lot. So again, she couldn't escape this uh, phenomena of vanishing city texture, and actually it's something that we are struggling a lot with, because uh, at some point we discovered uh, the ruins of one of the biggest sanatories in Otvotsk, a very modern complex from the 30s, a massive one, and it was burned down just a couple of years ago. These are the remains, and Miroslav was planning to reactivate this chimney you see with white smoke. And just a couple of weeks ago, when he went there again with one of our guests, Kerstiberg, who's writing a book on artist homes, the chimney simply wasn't there. I mean, nothing was there anymore. So, to an extent, it's a, it's a little race. I <coughs> <coughs> still have some time. I will run quickly to one other project which we are going to do this year. Uh, there's no more slides, I'm afraid. Uh, for Charlotte's project, it was important for her in the way she works with architecture that we encounter Shulbaruf area thanks to a novel by a Polish writer uh, who was describing this area as a place where he used to spend his childhood, childhood and it was him who took Charlotte around. And this idea of architecture triggering memories and caring memories is very close to her and the whole other, uh, the whole notion of spaces of childhood as something very, which shapes us is very important. And this brings us back to the studio, I guess. And for this year, in order to balance the, the town and the studio, we decided to work with two other artists. And uh, Tassita Dean, a British artist and Belgian painter, Luke Thoymans, visited Otfos in December 2011. And Miroslav uh, used to work with Luke for a couple of on occasions uh, on new commissions, but they are also close friends. And Tassita's work often focuses on artist spaces or artist studios or domestic spaces. And to some extent, the personal relationship with Miroslav made it more natural to maybe to intervene in the uh, studio itself and to do something in there. And it's still in progress. We, we are still finalizing things. But what Luke uh, 
suggested for, for the project as a, his contribution is to repaint a drawing from his childhood room. In 1993, he painted a painting, repainted the drawing of two geese in his child's room, and this was the drawing which kind of terrified him as a child. And now he wants to repaint this painting on the studio floor. That's just one of the aspects of, of his intervention. And I just think it's a very simple, but very, very accurate and very moving gesture. And it simply shows that when we are talking about extracting meanings from, from the place, it has kind of two dimensions. One is like, <laughs> one is like well, uh, digging in the archives and looking at those big histories and the space in general, and the other would be certain sensitiveness towards the, the place and the micro histories, personal experiences. And I think, yeah, these are the two ways in which artists we worked at today approach the topic. And probably it's also important in our work to not only to ask ourselves how do the artists <coughs> extract those meanings, but why do they do that and why do we want to work in a place such as Oxford? Can I just think that every time something is realized, it helps us to uncover different layers of the city and it's about describing the city in different ways all over again. Yeah.